Alright folks, hello and welcome back to Downstage Gaming. I'm your host, Josh, and this is part 9 of our B-Sides Let's Play of The Letter. When we last left off, we had finished off Marianne's chapter here, and... Unfortunately, I guess, although it's weird to say it's unfortunate that Marianne is uh, still alive. We basically, there's a branching choice here, right, of whether or not we uh, went upstairs and saw the mirror, or whether we were downstairs and got something else. And either way, then, there's a choice of getting one version of the ending or another version of the ending. And now, for twice in a row, we've gotten the ending one variant. Uh, so we will later go back and get the uh, Marianne death variant. Uh, but we'll worry about that later. For now, we have moved on to uh, Rebecca's chapter, and uh, I think this, I know I kind of said it before with Zax, but this is for real, I think, going to be the first one and the next two after it. It's basically going to be like a whole new chapter, I think, because like, there's so much <laughs> that we have not seen that we're now going to see, I think. Uh, so let's just get right into it. Is this beginning bit something we've seen before? It is, but just the little bit. All right, 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 right. So we get the call uh, that basically uh, Isabella has not doing so well. So we promised to go pick her up. We head over to the mansion. We try to get in contact with her, but she's already gone. We don't know that Just Ash is left. Just please make sure there won't be any other mishaps, ma'am. My team would be more than happy to help you then. Well, all right, Mary Ann. You rude, rude person. Let's see. Aw. I must have seen that one before. It's cute, though. Okay. You worry too much. Let me handle those things. So, yeah, so we come to the mansion and we're just kind of right now spying while we wait for Rose to finish. We're, we're spying on Hannah and Luke finishing the deal here. Do be thrilled, though. I imagine it's not... Darling, your liver. You already had a glass today, and apparently a few days ago as well. How many times do we have to remind you? Doctor's orders, remember? Yeah, Hannah's in a better relationship with Luke. What okay, so Just we noticed second, something darling. weird going on with Luke, but we don't know what the deal with Say that is. Say my regards to Isabel, please. Poor girl. Please let her know she doesn't have to worry and tell her to get some rest. I, it makes me mad. I could get it. But it makes me mad that the whole reason that Hannah is in such a better place with Isabel is because Luke didn't flirt with her this time. Like, I can understand if Isabella flirted, but Luke was the one who flirted at her, not the other way around. Anyway, we're looking forward to seeing you tomorrow. Likewise, ma'am. All right, no shadows, dark clouds. So we finish things up with Rose. We head back. We go to the movie theater for this night. And we get shown the letter by Isabella. Isabella tries to get us to believe Today's her. Today's not a good day for a movie night out. But then I... she decides not to stick it out with us and instead go home. I think I'll pass. Enjoy, you guys. Let's take a look. Okay. Isabella refuses to meet our eyes, Zachary's in particular. And though she smiles, it's hollow and belied by her trembling hands and drooping shoulders. I wait for another outburst from her when she drags in a breath, anything easier to deal with than her short, wounded glances. Only it doesn't come. Instead, she stumbles back and merely walks off on Isabella, us. Isabella, wait! Zachary and Ashton's voices immediately follow mine. However, the swell of the afternoon crowd has already swallowed her retreating back before our words can reach her. Regardless if they do, I don't think she'll listen either. So exasperating! And here I was thinking earlier how admirable she can be when she acts like her age. All because of one stupid piece of prank she can't let go of. Despite the tense, awkward air she leaves, none of us speaks nor chases after her. Even my own frustration over the matter, even with Ashton's seeming indifference. Until Zachary's sharp exhale slices through the stiff atmosphere, and he voices out what we're likely too proud to admit, given our natures. Really, guys? She walked out on us, Zachary! Can you believe her? I don't think that's what Zachary's saying, Rebecca. Yes, I saw. But that ain't the point here. You could have at least humored her. Toned down on the teasing for a bit. He sends Ashton a pointed look at the last one. For a moment, the latter appears about to say something in his defense, but soon drops the idea altogether. He swiftly averts his gaze with a small frown, his hand going to rub the back of his neck in an awkward gesture of comfort for himself. 
He knows Zachary's right, in more ways than one. And this is the closest we can get to him admitting he's in the wrong, but... You can't just tolerate that! If this is her idea of a joke, I fail to see what's so funny about it. She went overboard, Zachary. I was just about to say that, like, this will be interesting to see because Rebecca's in a much better place with Isabella. But apparently, you still want to be a total jerk, Rebecca. And then, she goes home all upset. Like, we're the ones at fault here? Cut her some slack, please. We're all aware how she felt about the mansion in the first place, yeah? <laughs> you don't really believe what's written on that paper, do you? No, but come on, Ash. You're the detective here. You must have noticed something we didn't. Hey, Zach, keyword detective. Police? Uh huh, yeah, we get Dealing it. Dealing with supernatural shit isn't in our training manual, if that's what you're trying to get at. You're gonna regret this in a week. <laughs> I ain't, I ain't. All I'm trying to say is, we all have our bad days. Give her the benefit of the doubt, okay? She was behaving like a child, Zachary. Ain't we all? <laughs> oh, I love Zach. Look, let's just. Hear her out next time, I Talk about it properly, preferably without anyone blowing a fuse. She won't be making a big deal out of this if she's in a better mood in the first place. Something else must have ticked her off at work. Just snowballed from there. Probably not something. Oh, you think the rights? A shadow passes over Ashton's eyes, his eyebrows furring deep thought, but he tucks it all away before Zachary notices, or I can ask about it. Catching that look on him, however brief as it is, leaves me unsettled for some reason. It's something I'm not used to seeing in him. Someone, though. Oh, so you did do something. Mm, what? No! Why does it have to be me? It's all Luke Wright, I tell you. You tell me. You used to be so friendly with each other. Yeah, but then they, then we develop feelings and we don't know what to do with them, Zachary. Now, every time you're in the same room, all you two seem to do is ruffle each other's feathers. What exactly happened, Ash? Nothing. All right, and you're a much better cook than sis. <laughs> I didn't do anything, really. You might be right, though. Something must have happened during the open house. Yeah, she said what happened, you bozos. There was a crowd, you know. It could have easily been one of their guests. <clears throat> uh, anyway, we should stop wasting time here. What's done is done. Let's just head inside. The movie's going to start soon. Ashton doesn't even wait as he shuffles inside, leaving Zachary and I staring after him. A diversion, if I've ever seen one. Frankly, I don't know what to make of that. Moments like this often blur the lines between those he prefers to keep at a distance and those he has opened up to. And sometimes, it puts the question of how far he's willing to trust his own friends. Sure, his straight face, whenever there's something in his mind, is nothing short of impressive. For people he never bothered to let in, it's typical. No one will care, and that's exactly how he prefers it. He never did quite like the kind who meddles. But those who know him well, those he's allowed to get close, are bound to catch on. Bound to grow concern regardless of the things he wants to keep to himself. Especially with that look on his face earlier. What's with him? I was just pulling his leg. I'm sure it's just as he says. He would have said something by now if there's anything we should be concerned about. Yeah, he's real good at communicating that kind of thing. You know how he operates. All empty reassurances. I don't believe the words myself. In the first place, there shouldn't have been a need to make these excuses for him. But it's obvious there's something that needs to be addressed as soon as I get the chance, and I can't be in the presence of other people. Yeah. Including Zachary. Just the two of us. Oh, all 13 of my locks know exactly how. <laughs> Don't hold it against him. Easy for you to say. He never does that to you guys. Yeah, that would be, you know, that'd be pretty bad. He knows his boundaries. And Belle would have probably hit him with that metal rolling pin she keeps, if he so much as thinks about it. So maybe you should consider that, Zach. Actually, I'm more surprised she hasn't done so yet. A short pause, then, like a switch that has been turned off, Zachary's jovial mood dies down. Doesn't take long for him to find his voice again, though his hesitance in it is apparent. Uh, Rebecca? About Bella earlier. Could you- Don't worry about her. Just enjoy your own movie for now. I'll check on her when I get home. Maybe I could even get the real story out of her. <sighs> That'd be great. Thanks, man. I was really hoping to watch this with all of you. We'll get another chance. It's not like we won't be seeing each other soon. We're living in the same city, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Touche. Anyway, you should head into. Who knows what trouble Ash has gotten in there without us. Somebody should keep him in line. He's a grown man. He can take care of himself for a few minutes. What about you? Getting us some snacks. 
My treat, yeah? We've still got a few minutes to spare before they start. I'll catch up with you both soon. All right, but don't take too long. Just bottled water for me, if you're planning to get some drinks, too. Right, gotcha. Peace. Gives my shoulder a light tap, then hurries over the snack bar. Briefly, I allow my gaze to linger past it, towards the far end of the street, in the same direction Isabella took off earlier. Searching, hoping, expecting she'll simply be standing among the passing crowd, that everything's just a bluff. Perhaps there'll also be an apology ready at the tip of her tongue, and a promise to be more responsible with her actions next time. Yeah, this is a wonderful dream world you're living in, Rebecca. But much as I will it, there's no sign of her. After that little spat, it'll be foolish to even wait at this point. So, with a sigh, I finally step inside. It's not the excited chatter that stops me once I'm in the small auditorium. Rather, it's the sheer lack of one. The hall's not completely empty, no. From where I'm standing, I can still spot a couple of heads dotting the seats, some nodding, mostly engaged in cheerful conversation before the film starts. But the absence of a bigger audience and what few murmurs floating in the air only made the room seem a lot larger than it actually is. Surely this can't be all there is from that crowd outside. They had to close a whole street for this, didn't they? In any case, this is still just the first showing. For sure, it'll have a bigger turnout in the next one. However, despite these reassurances, a pang of worry still hits me as I stride down the aisle, passing by row after row of empty seats in search of ash. I don't even want to think how Zachary would feel after all the effort he put into this. Though, if there's still any comfort to find here, it's that there'll be less uh, there'll be less chances of loud interruptions, particularly from theater goers lacking manners. Now, last time that was you guys, maybe not this time. And the fact I'll be spending the evening with a friend, and Ashton, a familiar warmth, the one I've harbored longer than anything, immediately unfurls in my stomach. In spite of myself, in spite of the reasons I've convinced myself of for being here. Naturally, those are not lies, they never are. I'm here to give what little morale boost I can lend as a friend. And if I also get to sit next to Ash and maybe our hands accidentally brush against each other, you know, so be it. But I won't deny Ashton has been a part of it too. Sometimes you simply can't say no, and once you realize logic's no longer at play, striking a fair balance with reason becomes harder, trickier. It's not like I can simply ask myself to stop or forget for a moment, can I? doesn't work that way. Not after I've gone and loved the same person for 17 years. If only he'd look this way for once. Even for a short, fleeting second. Then maybe... Okay, listen. I personally know the guy. He might be able to help. I can easily get in touch with him if you want, Okay, so... great. So we're even doing this even if his mom's not here. I thought we all agree there'd be no what calls tonight. Pay up, Ash. That pizza fun box needs some cash. All he gives for an answer is a glance and a small smile, yet it still sends the heat swirling in my stomach, rising up my cheeks. A feeling I instantly pull the reins on as I take the empty seat next to him. Traitorous little thing, that smile. I don't think he's ever been aware of what it does to any woman who happens to catch sight of it. He wouldn't have thrown it out so casually otherwise. Then again, it's also one of the very few things he allows only the people close to him to see. Sorry, just a sec, Becca. Hey, I, uh, I gotta go? If you get this message, just... just let me know, okay? No. I'll free up my sketch if you want to check with him. No fees attached. I promise. Bye. Fees? You're not doing anything illegal, He's leaving a you? message for Isabel, you utter fool. <laughs> you know me better than that. Inspector Abigail? Yeah. Huh? No! I am not losing that bet. Don't count on it. Oh, come on, Ash. It's not like it's going to put a dent in your paycheck. Which one is it? Officer Kyle? Officer Benjamin? The Chief? None of the above. And Chief hates it when I call him. Give it up. Ash stops a moment when I hold a hand up at him, the expression on my face expecting, although a smile threatens to break through the baffled look spreading on his own. He resembles a lost child like this. Sometimes I forget we're the same age. What? Mobile. And why? Evidence! What else? You always preach they don't lie. Put your money where your mouth is. You're not gonna like what you see. Show. He blinks once, then sighs. Rather loudly at that, with every intention to let the whole auditorium know how tedious he finds this little back and forth. 
Just the same, he raises the gadget up to my face, but before I can even read past a single letter, he swiftly slides it out of view and straight into his pocket. It's not work, I swear by my badge. Oh, just admit you didn't want to pay. You are worse cheapskate than Belle. Becca, look at me. Tell me, does this face seem like it's lying to you? <laughs> Maybe. Here's an idea then. Why don't you find a mirror and answer that yourself? <laughs> <laughs> Pass, I've seen it plenty. It still looks the same. Honestly, it's getting boring. All right, suit yourself. Just remember, I'm not the one who got caught breaking a deal we all made. Really, Rebecca? It's not what you're thinking. A friend just needed help with the problem. It's nothing big enough that I'll run off on you two. Don't worry. It's a sign. Time to end this little banter. As fun as this chat has been, some lines he simply doesn't allow me to cross, regardless of the years we spent growing up together. Especially with the sort of work he does. Of course, that doesn't mean I haven't tried. I still do from time to time, hoping he'll at least share something more substantial than his routine vague answers. Occasionally, he'll talk about it if we ask, but never in full detail and only stuff we need to know. In case we need to look for his dead body, he joked one time. Doesn't repeat it after a stern look from me, but it doesn't make the whole situation any less frustrating. Where's the big guy, by the way? He can't be missing from his own premiere. Let's get some Mike and Ives. Food, is there something you want? I could... No, it's good. He'll know what to get. Frankly, I'm more worried about him. Do you think Zack's gonna be okay with this? I don't need to follow where he directs his eyes next to know what he's talking about. I've seen it with my own, felt the exact same doubt. I honestly don't know. I only have a small idea of how these things work, but he put a lot of effort into this. Someone will certainly notice. Certainly. <sighs> he did put a chunk of his savings on it. He was hoping to start a small studio when it takes off. If it takes off. You doubt him? No, just... concerned, I guess. As far as I know, the whole fund was initially for the studio. Space, equipment, that kind of stuff. I have no idea what suddenly came over him. He already had enough to start one on his own. Why would he use it for something else? Probably is a test bed, right? I'm sure it'll be fine. Zachary knows what he's doing. He had me check the scripts and the research he did before he went through with this. His uh, personal experience with the topic also counts. I think he's onto something here. He merely lets out another hum, only I can't figure out if it's an agreement or meant to be something else. The whole conversation dies down soon after, and a silence falls between us. A strange kind of atmosphere that teeters between tense and uncomfortable, almost to the point of awkward. Between the two of us, this rarely ever happens. We've already gone past this point as children. Yet, Ashton can't seem to sit still, discreetly checking his phone every few seconds, glancing back at the entrance when he thinks no one's paying attention. He's in love with Isabel. <laughs> even when people have started to trickle into the room and fill some of the vacant seats. It makes the wait for Zachary all the more longer than it should be. In the thick of it, I find myself grasping for something else to talk about. Just to calm the growing restlessness in my stomach. Huh. I feel like talking about the mansion is gonna be kind of a no-go for a variety of reasons. Because also that's going to, we, we don't know yet that he was at the mansion. If we find out, if he tells us that, we'll be pissed because we'll find out that he took Isabella. Let's, uh, let's do What About You? Yes. Good. Okay. Good thing it's not difficult with him. Once you know how and what makes Ashton tick, getting him in a conversation doesn't take much effort. Amusing how most people often assume he's hard to approach, when in reality it's the opposite. What about you? Hmm? What about me? Don't play coy. We haven't heard anything decent from you. Except for those memes you leave in the chat box every morning. Hey, they're funny. <laughs> to you, maybe. <laughs> Belle hates them. No, she doesn't. I know she likes them well enough. <laughs> Believe what you will, but that's beside the point. You've been quiet since your promotion last year. I've been on a big case. Even more so after you got assigned to your current case. I trail off, letting the silence speak my meaning instead of the words I don't utter. There's no need to voice each of them out. I know he understands perfectly well what I'm trying to get at. He always did. It's evident when his whole demeanor shifts, the carefree air around him gone at once, shoulders losing their laid-back slant. You know I can't talk in detail about that. Well then, talk about something else. It doesn't have 
have to be any of those things. It could be anything under the sun. It's not so hard. I'm in love with your neighbor. Rebecca, out of everyone else, you know how this whole thing works. I can't just... We do worry, you know? Zachary worries. Isabella worries. I worry. Though his mouth briefly opens, nothing comes of it except for a contemplative frown. I want to tell him more. To reel the idea into his head again and again until he says something. Make him remember this one little thing before he runs off to God knows where doing God knows what. Again. Instead, we fall back in one of those worthless phrases both of us seem to share a lot as of late. Same old song and dance. Ranting might be useless at this point, but I won't take it back. I began to count the passing seconds, vaguely wishing for Zachary's arrival with the movie's start, something else to concentrate on. But as soon as I think that would be the end of it, he speaks. Hesitant, careful in his choice of words. The chief... The chief found a new attempt to pull a prank on the other week. Is that even allowed? Using the police car? No. And that doesn't bother anyone? At all? Oh, that's right. Uh, Lee was talking about this story at the beginning of uh, Hannah's chapter. Uh, maybe a few, but he's the chief. Chances are he'll probably get swept under the rug. <laughs> he can pretty much do whatever he wants and uh, nothing will come to it. It doesn't really matter. Everyone knows he's harmless when he's like that. Probably just procrastinating on his paperwork. Eventually, he'll also get tired of the new temp. I'll give it a week or so, and... Oh yeah, speaking of the new temp, Inspector Carl. So out of the blue, yet so equally mundane. Boring. Dull. Nothing's remotely special about this attempted small talk, yet despite myself, a fond smile still spreads across my face. It feels nothing less than the old days. Back when things were less complicated. Back when it was only the two of us. A lot has really changed in 17 years when you think about it. I've grown out of my shell, for one. Maybe even a little too much from that shy little girl who someone else had to defend from bullies. I mean, who would have thought she'd ever become a teacher after that? Then again, if it weren't for Ash, things might not have changed at all. I suppose it's something I'll always owe him. How he's always stood by me. How he's become the one constant in my life after all these years. And sitting beside him like this again, like how we used to. I wish time will simply stand still. Rebecca. I'm trying to have fond memories of you right now, Ash. Could you please not interrupt? His voice immediately snaps me on my little daydream. I don't even get a short moment to compose or berate myself for it. Because when I glance up, I find him peering at me, face too close to mine for comfort. Heat quickly makes its way up my face while I fumble for words to answer him with. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Were you even listening? Uh, sorry. I uh, just got distracted. Uh, the weeks before exams are always the busiest. You look a bit red in the face, though. You okay? Isabella mentioned you've been sick. I I'm fine, <laughs> really. Don't listen to her. I'll tell you the day, Quill. Sure. I'm sure, Ash. I was already feeling well enough this morning. Do you think I'll be able to work if I wasn't? <laughs> She's just making a bigger deal out of something that's... The rest of what I'm saying easily dies on my tongue as he places a hand on my forehead. It's only to check my temperature, I'm fully aware of that. But with him this close, eyes searching and curious, I could pretend he loves me the way I want him to. Pretend I'm the one he sees, when a tender look he so rarely spares anyone crosses his face. Pretend it's something he does only for me, even if the truth's far from it. You don't seem to have any fever, but we can ask Zack if you're not feeling well. I swat his hand away at once, ignoring how much my own heart clenches at the loss of contact. Don't! <sighs> Bell already left. We can't bail out on Zachary now. If another one of us leaves, how do you think he'll feel about that? I can stay with him? Don't be ridiculous! It's not going to be the same thing! Besides, I'm really okay now, so leaving is out of the question. Who's leaving? I have to suppress my laughter when Ash's expression devolves, dissolves into a tiny frown. A whole slew of arguments must have already been at the tip of his tongue. Luckily, Zachary chooses that moment to show up, his sudden arrival preventing whatever this is from escalating into something that can go both ways. A grin is the only answer I can give at the question of the man's eyes. No one! Becca. We were just talking about his co-worker. Oh. Is anybody I know in particular? Retiring or something? There's a split second pause before Ashton answers. When his sour look once again lifts into a small smile, I know it's the moment he decides to abandon the topic altogether. It's not like he can win against me anyway. 
Not really. It was just a few people being transferred lately. Usual bureaucracy, huh? You could say that. Chief just annoyed at the paperwork. Zachary, why don't you sit down first? Before you two start talking about workplace politics of all bloody things. Wow, you're really not good at this, Rebecca. <laughs> I'd hate to get caught in the middle of it. <laughs> Zachary gives out a hearty laugh, but quickly moves to take the unoccupied seat on Ashton's other side. If he's ever worried about the less than stellar attendance to his movie, it doesn't show in his face. In fact, for the better half of the evening, only a cheery mood permeates in the air. Whatever hiccups we've previously ran into, uncalled for jealousies, petty squabbles, and foolish chain letters, all lay forgotten at the back of our minds. If only all four of us were here. No, you'd hate that. You'd just be mad at Isabella. <laughs> the rest of the evening passes without further event, though we don't stay long after. Some plans were made for after the movie that night, but the, for after the movie the night before, but there are mostly Isabella's suggestions, and with her absence, there isn't much point to it, is there? We'll just have to find some other time, preferably when everyone's in a better frame of mind. Certainly not when the rest of us are this exhausted, have things nagged, nagging at the back of our minds, or this emotionally drained. Although we still have a long night ahead of us, and chances of spending together what little free time we have might grow slim in the next days. Sometimes there are things you simply can't force. A sentiment we all likely share at the moment, if the silence before we part ways tells anything. Even Zachary seems reluctant to break it. Well, it, it, it was fun, despite, you know, <laughs> oh. but really. Thanks for staying, you two. You two are my real friends. Not like that Isabella. I hope she gets in a car accident. Oh, no. Don't mention it. It's the least we can do. Nah, I owe you both. Especially you. You sure you don't want payment for all that history checking you did? Quite sure. Oh, you know what? On second thought, just save it for when you win an award. Treat us someplace nice or something. <laughs> I doubt it will go that far. Oh, please. Think positive for once. I, I, I hear you, ma'am. I hear you. I would... <laughs> I I just got the idea. I would love it, like, in this timeline of events, the, like, critic that gave the bad review last time was at, like, this first showing or whatever, but this time was able to concentrate because there wasn't, like, people whispering about haunted mansions in the back, and so this time they could really pay attention to the movie. This time they gave it a super positive review. Zachary's career just takes off. Then... Put some back into it. It's really too early to say, but here's hoping, I guess. We'll see. We'll see. Anyhow, I'm off. Got some new photography gig lined up in the next few days. But just call me anytime you guys want to hang out. Sketch should be easy to free up for some R and R now. Or some, you know, investigating mansions. What are you, Ash? You coming with? From both glance this way, the mind probably comes off sharper, more scrutinizing. He hasn't said a word since we left the theater, his eyes completely glued to his phone as soon as the movie ended. Typical. Once he notices, though, a wry smile makes its way into his face. His apology. And like every other time, it'll suffice. Oh, yeah. I need to double check something with the guys at the precinct. Same way, then. You gonna be fine on your own, Rebecca? My car's parked just a block away from here. It should be an easy walk, but both of you should get going if you're in a hurry. Right. Drop us a message when you get home. And that thing with Isabella, too, when you get a chance to see her. See ya. Yeah, I will. Be careful, you two. Bye. Bye. They leave without a backward glance. But despite my own exhaustion and strong desire to go home, I remain at the same spot for some scant seconds still, watching them, trying to figure out where to go from here, as if the answer can be found in their retreating backs. If Zachary hasn't mentioned Isabella again, I probably would have forgotten about his request. I would have simply let the anchor, left the anchor to subside until we can pretend like nothing happened. When I finally cross the street after they disappeared behind the evening crowd, I only have one choice in mind. She's not answering, though. I wonder if we're going to have the same, uh, see a ghoul car accident bit, but just without Isabella. Let it ring for another second before making a swipe of the screen and dropping the call. I don't bother stopping myself from releasing a loud sigh this time, long and weary, heavy with every frustration in my body today. By this hour, she's probably already back home, and it's very likely she has holed herself up in her apartment. Won't be surprised, she's done that before, very much like a kid throwing a tantrum. I just don't understand her sometimes. I don't understand why she can't get a hint, why she doesn't think she's being ridiculous. Why, of all people, we're the ones she has to play some dumb Halloween prank on. 
Granted, Ashton's the one who started it, but did she think it'd be a good idea to go with that story? I... man, I don't know. Like, it's this kind of thing that makes me think that, like, Isabella and Rebecca are not as good friends as they seem to make out that they are. Because, like, a good friend would not treat another friend this way, even if they did think that, you know, this kind of paranormal stuff was ridiculous. It makes you wonder why we're friends, but... Here we are. Okay, well, there you go. Now I'm left to fix things after her. If I'm gonna be honest, not having her around for a few days today is a welcome break. Peace and quiet is one thing you'll rarely get with her around. Yet the silence, the lack of her presence, is nowhere near comforting. It merely lends the air this strange clarity, every little sound, every single movement more palpable. With it comes the unease. Hasn't really left me this afternoon, and against everything I wish for today, I find myself yearning for an interruption and dial her number again. As frustrating as today is, I can also use that friendly voice. It rings for a good minute or two, until just when I'm begging to think she's not going to answer this either, the line picks up. Yeah, I bet it does, and I bet this is Isabella. Bell, hey! I'm just checking on you. I'm on my way home. Is... is there something you want me to pick up for you? You probably skipped dinner, didn't you? Don't worry, that diner a block away is still open. Want me to buy you anything from there? Isabella? <laughs> Isabella, that's not a very funny prank you just did. A jolt of surprise hits me, and in the resulting panic, I accidentally dislodge my mobile from the seat on the dashboard. Soon, I'm scrambling blindly for it with my other hand while keeping a steady eye on the road ahead. Although muffled heavily by the surface, a voice still crackles from the loudspeakers before I can put it back. My temper rises. What the? What's this? Some sort of practical joke? Isabella, if you think this is funny... My hand stops dead for a moment. I spare the device a brief glance, waiting. Seconds pass. Nothing happens, though. Frankly, I'm not sure what I'm expecting, but the lines of my mouth forms into a frown regardless. Isabella? Is everything all right over there? I have to make a conscious effort not to panic right then and there, though my tight hold in the steering wheel tells a different story altogether. Isabella? Belle? Hey, Belle. What happened? Only a burst of static answers me, and... Maybe this lapse is entirely because of exhaustion. It has been a long day, and I haven't fully recovered from last week's bout of flu, contrary to what I've been telling people. Though perhaps had I paid closer attention to it, and I'd not been so occupied with other thoughts, I probably would have noticed earlier that it never came from my phone, but from somewhere right behind me. Uh-huh. Time slows to a crawl. Looking up is a mistake. The first thing I see is its face, a ghastly shade, every inch battered, bruised, and bloody. Even in the darkness and the world passing by in a blur of lights outside, I can still make out the wounds. Blood still oozes from it, little trails of crimson running down its face, glistening under what little light there is. But it's the gleam in its eyes that catches mine. The quiet plea, the anguish, and the desperation in them. More than its hideous features, the awful stench of gore now soaking the air. And try as I might, I can't bring myself to look away. Even as its lips contort into a horrific smile. Even as the sharp, harsh noise pierces the air and the silence around us. And against everything I've been taught, and I've constantly reminded myself, I close my eyes. It's a brief moment. A short, vivid second of muscle memory, an instinct completely taking over. And if I didn't allow it, if my hands didn't move, or my feet didn't hit the brakes in that exact second, I might have... I might have... No. I shake the notion away before I lose myself in it. Right now, it's an ugly line of thought I refuse to venture into. Not when breathing is a struggle and every ounce of strength has been totally drained from my body. Most definitely not while the sound of screeching tires still rings in my ears. I'm alive. I'm safe. That's all that matters. But it's not... It is... It is not my face that I look for when I finally open my eyes. All gone. I expected stains, little telling marks, and creases on the covers to show me where it sat not a second ago. But whoever, whatever it is, it left not a single trace. And though courage is a hard thing to gather at this point, I take what little of it remains in me and turn towards the back seat. Even then, there's none. Was there really something in there? Of how empty it is, I'm beginning to doubt it. 
That stupid flu again. Ah, I need a long rest after this. My hands fell uselessly to my sides, numb from how taut my grip on the wheel has gone, yet still trembling from the unexpected rush of adrenaline. Against my ears, my heart still pounds in erratic rhythm, my breathing hasn't slowed down. But the world has already righted itself into waiting for me, and little by little, second after second, as I sit here motionless, color begins to seep back around me. Along with it are the sounds and a voice, no longer as in indistinct as it was earlier. Um, Her voicemail. Oh, okay. Thanks. Mm, let's see. I mean, how does <laughs> they have? They must have. Vo like, wh how did she not know how to do voicemail? Hello there, Isabella Santos here. Sorry you missed me. Just leave a message after the beat, and I'll get back to you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Shut up, Ashton. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say anything. <laughs> These are the worst voicemails I've ever heard by like every single character in this game. It's a terrible voicemail. Alright, kids, settle down before you break anything. The recording is old, made early in our friendship, roughly three or four years ago, probably. I can't remember now. I'm more surprised it's about kept this when she could have easily replaced it. But then again, little things like this, no matter no matter imperf how imperfect they may seem, are what made her the happiest. A fond smile slips my lips before I know it. I allow it to, despite the headache already forming in the sides of my head, and every negative thought still swimming inside. When at last I speak, my tone is as light as it can be. Hey, Belle. I know you're in there. I'm on my way home. If you need anything, send me a message ASAP. I'll see if I can still get it for you. You've got 15 minutes. And, uh, if there's something, something you want to talk about, let me know, okay? Uh, bye. The phone call ends with a faint click, and a pensive mood washes over me. With it comes a small truth. Her stay has always been meant to be something fleeting. Earn some good money, go home. It's what she tell herself during her first year here. Now? Half a decade later, I'm not sure if she still believes that. Even I'm not sure if I still believe it. With these ill feelings I carry with me, I'm more inclined to think there's something in her reasons that has changed along the way. They're merely hunches, but it's something I'd rather not bring up. Because I'm almost too afraid of what her answer will be. Yes, God forbid she loves someone. The silence is far from a pleasant company for the rest of my drive. Long day this October 21st. Aww. But it's a respite all the same from an overactive imagination playing tricks on a flu out of mind from smiles never meant for my eyes. I mean, if she's still suffering from the flu, as she said multiple times, she should really not be out and about. All of them I abandoned, if only for a brief moment. All right, so we get to October 24th. But we are going to have to see what else awaits us in this new version of Rebecca's chapter next time. Until then, this has been Downstage Gaming. I've been your host, Josh, and I will catch you all next time.